G'day guys and welcome to my lab and to our ninth lesson in our Zero to Zelda How to Make an ARPG in Godot 4 series. Now we have been up to an awful lot of things so far and we'll recap that in a moment. First I just want to give a little disclaimer and that is to say that I don't know everything there is to know about Godot. I'm a teacher, that means I know a little bit about a lot of things rather than a lot about a little. So I know a bit of Godot but I am certain there are better ways of doing a lot of what I do here. This is just the way that works for me, the way that I find easiest to pass on. But if you know a better way, can you please tell me in the comments so that I can learn through this experience as well, please? I'm also going to start putting up on my GitHub um, copies of the projects at various stages. So I'm going to put up there lessons uh, six, seven, eight, and nine, um, and I'll just keep putting them up because I know it can be hard to copy code off of the screen, um, especially now that we're getting quite lengthy scripts. So just as a backup, you can go and grab the code from my GitHub. Though I would say try and type it first before you just copy and paste because it's just going to help you learn it a bit better, but it's there as a as a backup. So let's do a quick recap on what we should have already done if we been following along all the way. Now if you've been keeping pace you should have created your project, your tile map, your player character, uh, you should have an enemy, you should have sort of set up your layers and masks and things for collisions. Uh, a few of our animations should already be done and we started using area 2Ds and some signals to interact between our player and our enemy. What we'll be doing today is adding health, health bars and also a death animation for our player. Why? Well, as always, it's to further enhance our gameplay and make our game more engaging and exciting for people to play. You'll need to be able to understand and apply how to add nodes uh, and how to add animations. We've done all of those things already, so you shouldn't have a drama at all. And by the end of this lesson, you should have a combat system that includes health, health bars, and a death animation for our player. Here we are in Godot, and I've got my player scene up on the screen, and I am going to start adding health bar things. So. To follow along, you're going to need your player scene open. Um, I've got the 2D view up, and I'm going to click on my player's root node, click on the plus, and look for a progress bar. Comes up there, just like we get with all the other nodes. Hit enter, and that introduces our progress bar into our scene. But it's stupidly large, right? So let's first, we're gonna rename it from progress bar to health bar. Next, we're gonna come over to our inspector menu on the right-hand side. Now, under our inspector menu, we wanna turn off show percentage, and you can see that that knocks the percentage off the screen there, which is a nice benefit, because that was taking up way too much space. We wanna change the fill mode. Instead of beginning to end, we want it to be the other way around, because our health bar is gonna be full to start with, and it's gonna reduce. So we wanna have end to beginning. Then we wanna leave our maximum value at 100, because that's what our player's maximum health is at present. We can scroll down now until we get to the layout um, option here. Click on layout and then on transform. And what we can do in here is actually just reduce the size of our um, health bar because it's kind of ginormous. So I'm gonna put it to maybe um, 0.2. That looks a bit better. It could probably go a bit thinner. Actually, I'm just gonna move it above my player's head. I'll make it a bit thinner like that, maybe a little bit wider. And I'm happy with that. So that's the scale sorted. I'm gonna keep moving down now. I wanna get down to where it says visibility. And then you've got modulate and there's a white bar there. We're gonna click on that because this is how we can actually set the color of our little health bar. And normally, I know The Legend of Zelda doesn't have a health bar, but it's such an easy thing for us to do in Godot 4. I wanted to add it in so you could learn how to do it. We'll actually add some hearts and tie all this in together like Zelda in a GUI later on, but I wanted to get these little bars up. Even though it's not strictly Zelda-like, it's such an easy thing to do. So it's just a great thing for you to learn. Um, and we want to change the modulate to a sort of a greenish color. And that's all I wanted to do in the uh, player one. Now we want to duplicate all of that in the magpie one. So I'm gonna click on my magpie scene, click on my magpie root node, click on the plus sign, progress bar, enter. It brings our progress bar in, click on it to change the name of it, come across to our um, inspector, change it to end to beginning, click on show percentage so that disappears. We're gonna change our max value this time though to 50 because that's what I wanna set our magpie's maximum health too, and we're gonna set the players to 100. So change that max value to 50, come down to where it's got layout, click on that, come down to where it's got transform, click on that, and then you'll see scale again. So we go to point two, actually maybe try point three this time because the point two is a bit too small. Yeah, it's not too bad, I'll just drag it above. 
actually I think that's still a bit too wide did I decide 0.2 is actually too thick anyway there's that one done and if you remember the last thing we had to do is come down to where it says visibility and modulate click over here somewhere grab a greeny color Ooh, that's, that's not as yeah that one all right that's all we need to do in the scenes like this now we need to jump over to our scripts and that's where we're going to continue by adding in some functionality for these things all right, if you go into the player script now, we're gonna do a little bit of work in there. So we need to add some new variables first and foremost. Um, we need something to handle our health and we also need something to handle whether we're dead or not. Um, so we're gonna add two variables in here. One is called health and we're gonna make that equal to 100 and the other is the is dead and we're gonna make that equal to false. It's just gonna be a simple true or false. After we've got our health and our is dead variable in, the next thing we want to do is add in a couple of functions that are going to handle our health and our death. So we want to add a function called update health, and that looks like this. So we're going to have var health bar equals health bar. So this is um, creating a new variable and we're making it equal to that health bar node that we made earlier. We're then going to set the value of that health bar to be the same as our player's health. Now, we don't want this bar to be visible the whole time. We only want it to be visible if the player has taken some damage, if it's not uh, at 100%. So this is what our next little if else is about. So if health is greater than or equal to 100, then health bar dot visible equals false. We want it to be invisible if the health bar is full. But if it's not full, we want it to be visible. So that's what that little if else does. And then you come further down and we've created a new function simply called die. And this one is saying if our health is less than or equal to zero and the player is not dead, so it's still flagged as false, we want to change that flag to be true. And then we want to play an animated sprite called die, which we haven't made yet. So we'll need to make that as well. So that's our first couple of bits of code. Next, I think we might go and add in our uh, magpie die animation. All right, here we go, let's do it quick smart. We need to click an animated sprite 2D. We need to add a new animation that we can call die. We need to leave it on five frames. We'll grab our Logan sprites, five horizontal, 10 vertical, nose lines, add frames. Done. All right, so in our player script, we've got a whole heap of stuff we need to do to get that dying animation to actually play when we want it to. So a whole heap of logic that goes into this. So first off, I just want to add into our physics process a little step to skip over the rest of our animations if our player is dead. What we don't want to happen is that it starts playing the dying animation, but it immediately swaps to play something else because of other processes. So what we're doing here, we're just saying if our player is dead, return. So we don't do the rest of this. Um, but that's not going to be everything we need in here, right? We're going to also need to call a few things. We need our um, update ooh, update health um, in here, update heath. We need our um, die function in here. Um, and there's going to be one other thing I want to put in here, and that's going to be an update animation. And we're going to do that by actually removing a whole bunch of this stuff from our... Um, physics process to put it into this update animation function instead. Now we're going to want to call that in here as well, like so. Um, and then we want to also get our move and slide, which we'd put in here just by um, tabbing it all down and bring that up in here as well in the right spot. So now what we've done is we've got our physics process and our physics process is going to call update health, die, update animation and move and slide. Um, and our update animation function is now got this if is dead return, otherwise all the stuff that we were doing before. Now, there is one more thing we still need to do. We need to click on our animated sprite 2D. We've made our die animation. We don't want it to loop, so click it so it's not looping. Um, but come across to our nodes and we want to signal the animation finished into our player script, which gives us this one here. Now, what our next step to do is we want to be able to um, play our whole dying animation. We don't just want to play the first frame. And that's what this is going to do here. So we're just putting in a little bit more logic to make it so that we can play the entire animation um, and then we queue free, which is deleting it from the scene basically. All right, so now for our magpie script. So let's just work our way through it. So we're going to need to add in, you know, those same sort of variables. So we need to have in our var health and we're going to have that equal to 50. And we also want our var is dead 
equals false, just like we did for our player. Let's scroll down now. The next thing I wanna do is right down the bottom, in our on magpie hitbox body entered, in here, what I would like to do is just put in something so we can sort of experiment with our health and things, um, or two things I wanna do actually. Um, I wanna make our magpie stop swooping when it's attacking, and that'll stop it sort of pushing our player. And I also want to make our magpie lose health when the two hitboxes collide. It's not gonna stay this way. This is just sort of a placeholder for this lesson. And in our next lesson, we're gonna add in the attack function of the player and we'll add some extra conditions. But we wanna put in here our swoop speed equals zero. So when the player is in range, we stop or our swooping speed hits zero and that just stops us pushing. And then I also wanna put in here our health equals health take 20 for example and then we need to um, do the opposite down here and go our swoop speed equals 75 the normal speed um, that should be about everything I think we need to do so let's jump in and have another look and see if uh, everything is working now oh no who am I kidding we haven't made our update health or our die function for our magpie Oof, that was close so what we need to do there then is just like we did for our player we need to add in these two functions and then we need to add those functions into the physics process so if we come up here to under um, our pick random direction i am putting in here these two functions so we've got our update health so it goes var health bar equals health bar so we're just saying that the health bar variable we just make here is equal to this health bar progress bar we made that health bar value is equal to our health. So the value of this is gonna be the same as whatever our health is. If our health is greater than or equal to 50, we don't want to show our health bar. So it's just the same as we did for our player. Otherwise, if we've lost some health, show it. And then our die is gonna be if health is less than or equal to zero and we are not dead, change that flag to true and then Q free. We don't have a die animation for the magpie, I couldn't be bothered. So we've got those two in there. We still need to incorporate them in in our, um, in our physics process. So let's just um, add them in here, update our health, and then update, uh, sorry, and then we need our die. I think those were the two we needed. We've already got moving slide there. We have our update animation used in various points. So I think that's it. So let's go and give it a test and see what we get. So we go and play. Now we can't see our magpie hitboxes or our player, so that's perfect. It finds us, it comes and attacks, it loses health and dies, I lose health. And if we can get ourselves hit once or twice more, oh, I seem to need to tidy up our boxes. Let's see if we die from this one. Ah, oh, there we go. So I died and one magpie survived. Brilliant. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. So let's have a look at our must, may, might. Your must, may, might for this lesson. Well, you must update your player and enemy scripts to enable the, the health and death functions to take place. Um, you may want to find another enemy sprite strip and see if you can't apply what you've learned with the magpie enemy to your own one. Um, maybe you could set it up in another space. Um, have different enemies with different variable variables so different speeds and attacks and things like that something to bear in mind what you might like to do try and create a ground-based enemy to complement our air-based enemy so it's going to be basically the same but you're just going to need to think about those layers and masks in a bit more detail what did we get up to today well we tidied up some of our code by taking some out of our physics process and creating new functions this makes our code a lot more readable um, we also added health variables and health bars that are connected to those variables um, we hid them unless the player is losing health so you don't just run around with a full health bar um, and we we also created our player's death animation. Next time we will get our player attack animation and um, function happening and we'll also work on cooldowns um, and change up how we're doing that because the way we're doing our damage at the moment is just to sort of show you how it works but we're going to refine that and make it a bit better in our next lesson. The quote I'd like to leave you with this time is from Albert Einstein and he once said, I have no special talent, I am only passionately curious. See you next time, guys.